Hello, my friend. Are you ready? Do you want to be a pirate? No. Okay. But you might be interested in learning fusion. My name is Vito. Most fusioners out there know me, but Da Vinci user probably don't know me at all. And I thought it's time to change that. My mission is to make fusion great again. You were probably thinking of Trump now, didn't you? Now, fusion is a very sophisticated, highly technical, but super creative tool. Maybe you have seen some of my tutorials that are a little bit advanced. And as a DaVinci user, you probably don't want to go there. Yeah, you don't want to go there. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy action going on there. But I thought since the integration of fusion in DaVinci, many of you guys are excited. Some are not, I know but uh, many of you are excited and you're probably wondering what you can do with Fusion and uh, how you can enhance your workflow or how you can streamline your whole uh, process. Especially if you're a one-man show, this is, might be the thing. So I'd say if you're ready, if you're ready to embark with me on this journey, I think I have to go back, I don't have a focus assistant here. If you're ready to embark with me on this journey, hop in. Okay, so today I want to introduce you to the Merge Tool. The Merge Tool is a tool that allows you to combine your footage. Now, if you think of layers where you stack up your layers, the Merge Tool basically allows you to stack up your footage. So let me give you an example. So as you can see, I have my clip already loaded into the timeline and I haven't done any color space conversions here because I'm not... Uh, sure about the color workflow here with DaVinci and Fusion. But here inside of Fusion, what I have done, I have assigned my lookup table, the gamut view, and I set it to output space as RGB. So you, you, to give you a real life example on how to use the merge, let me just go quickly through this and do some um, keying action here. So I will use the Delta key here. I bring in a delta key here and I branch out from our clip, bring it in here. And I will also drop in a clean plate node. These tools are new since Fusion 9. And let's first let me demonstrate to you what happens if I would use the Kia only. So I would choose a color here, which I don't know why this jiggles and wiggles like crazy. Okay, so I, I picked the green color here. Uh, forgive me my cheesy green screen. Don't, don't take this as an example. And by hitting A, you can view the alpha. So this is basically how the result looks uh, right off the bat. And now I want to demonstrate to you how easy the process of keying is made using the clean plate node. Okay, so with the clean plate selected, drag it into the viewport and then again, pick the background color. I choose the green. And I'm going to erode this a little bit so that we get rid of all them uh, bugs down there, something like that, and then simply check fill. Now this becomes our clean plate. And if we now hook this clean plate into the Delta key here, you can see that we automatically get a much better key. With C, I switch back to the RGB view. And once again, uh, you saw that I got this menu here. Uh, this you can access by Alt, releasing on a node. It will show you all the inputs you have available. Okay, another very powerful uh, tool that I want to talk about in another episode are the masks. If I would bring in a couple of masks here, we have the rectangle mask, we have the ellipse mask, the polygon mask. Masking infusion is super awesome, uh, but it really requires its own chapter because there's so many things you can do with it and uh, so many things that you might encounter, especially when in doing real life uh, projects. Uh, so, but we're gonna talk about the mask in, in another episode. For now, let's just take a mask, a poly mask, and I bring this in, I view the Delta here. And now I want to garbage mask the areas we don't need. So I will simply hook this polygon mask into the garbage mat. Now I will draw a mask around here very quick and dirty you can see it disappeared and now i will simply drag another mask in here 
and I hook this into the other mask and it automatically combines those masks. And I will draw my other mask. Bang. So we have garbage masked our garbage. Now let's continue with our merge action. So let's say we have this cheesy background here. Mm. I like cheesy backgrounds. Now I have to get used to the user interface here. If you have seen my other video, you saw that I'm uh, particularly uh, unhappy about this space here. Uh, but yeah. So here we have this background. And now I will change the depth using a depth node. I will set it to float 16. And I will also change the color space to as RGB. And now it will turn back to normal. So let me drop in a merge node already. So this is our merge node. And I will get rid of this here for now. And now I want to bring them brothers here together. So let's have a closer look at the merge node. You can see we have this yellow arrow and we have this green arrow. And there's another uh, very, very lonely uh, blue arrow down here. So the yellow triangle is labeled as background. The green one is the foreground and the blue one is the mask. You can see the background as the bottom layer and the green one as the top layer. If you want to be in the layer world, you can do so. Um, but in Fusion, we refer to it as background and foreground. Now I will hook in the background image into the background. The first time you hook something into a merge node, it will automatically go into the background. Then we hook the foreground in and it will also automatically go into the foreground if you already have the background occupied. Now, one thing I want to mention about nodal based workflow is that you should try to keep your flow. By the way, this is called the flow. You should try to keep your flow like very flowing. You know, you should keep it like very tidy and organized and make things uh, easy to read for yourself, but also for your coworkers. So, for example, sometimes you might put the background nodes over here and the foreground comes from the top. Another time you might put it from the bottom and the foreground from the, from the left. I would recommend you to create your own habit because this will enhance your workflow or it would speed it up quite a bit. So for example, I like to have my background coming in from the left and everything that is in the foreground on top of it comes from the top and the masks from the bottom. Now you can choose what kind of workflow you, you want to have. Now that we have this merge together, if we view this, you can see we have a resolution mismatch here. Okay, so what I like to do when I have a resolution mismatch is I like to bring in a background node. And now I want to make sure that the background node has the, the resolution of the comp, which is automatically set if you have set it in the preferences. But I want to also make sure it's in, uh, where is it? It's a new user in the interface, so, so I need to take out my spyglass. I set it to 16-bit float, and now I make sure that the alpha is all the way down to zero. This makes sure that this image is empty. So I will just use this as a container, sort of. Now we'll simply drag our background on top of this square box and it will automatically merge them together. You can see that the background is right inside the background slot and the foreground is properly inside the foreground. And now we have the proper resolution. And what we can do now is we can bring in a transform node and now we can move inside our domain. Okay, we can uh, change the size and so on and so on. I will put this into the background slot. So now you have to make a decision, for example, if you can't come in from the left, then how do you re rearrange this stuff? For example, you could do it like this. It's all your decision, my friend. Okay, so now we have our uh, dirty foreground. I'm, I'm not gonna go like very deep into this. It's not a keen tutorial. Where is it? With all these new labels, it's so difficult to find. Clean foreground, for example, you can use clean foreground. Now there are other parameters to tweak, but I, I don't wanna go too deep into this now. So now we have this combined. The next thing I wanna do 
is I want to add a light wrap. Now the light wrap again, we use our masks. I add two bitmap nodes. Now it might be a little confusing. Bitmap is really just a mask. It's basically a, a tool to derive masks from images or to combine your elliptical mask, poly mask, rectangle mask, all kinds of masks. You can combine this using the bitmap mask. For example, let's say we want to create a light wrap from this foreground. I would simply hook into those two masks. And now I have two identical masks. And what I do now is I hook one into the other. But with the first one, I will invert it and I will display the whole mask now. And now you can see we have this, uh, this sort of outline here. Now what I do is I ch change the paint mode to multiply. This will multiply the first mask on top of the second. And hence we get this outline here. Now, if you would take the soft edge here and increase that, it will bleed more into your foreground, something like that. Another thing to be aware of is the boundaries here, the clipping mode. So for example, this mask now, the clipping mode is set to none. If you will change this to frame, it will fix the issue we have here. Okay, so this could be our light wrap. Additionally, you could uh, take another bitmap mask. And as I said, you can derive masks from any image or output you have simply by choosing the channel that you want to derive from. For example, here I choose the luminance and it will create a mask derived from the luminance of the image. Additionally, you can change the, the low and the high. I don't know how to call this, the range perhaps. Okay, you can change this if you want. And now I could, for example, say where the background is black, I don't need a light wrap or I don't need to be strong. So I would simply take another bitmap mask tool, hook our light wrap in here into the yellow, of course. And now I will multiply this one on top, sort of like this. And you will see that it partially becomes darker. Okay, of course, because this is a light wrap, we want to blur this. So I bring in a blur node and by shift clicking and dragging over the pipe and releasing, you can insert it. So I will blur this image quite a bit. And this is our light wrap. And now what do we do here? How do we finish the light wrap? So I will drop in a Boolean tool. Now you might ask, oh my God, this looks like very technical. What is the Boolean tool? Boolean automatically sounds like math. Yeah, but actually it's, it can be very simple. It can be very complex, but it can be also very simple. So for example, I use this channel Boolean mostly when I do the add and the multiply operations. Now, of course, there are other operations that I use, but I use it whenever I do add or multiply uh, operations, I use the Boolean tool. Now I see people using the merge tool to do these kind of operation, but there is a very tricky thing that you need to be very careful, which I'm going to show you right after I finished up the light wrap. To create a light wrap, I hook the Boolean into the pipe of the foreground, and then I hook the blurred background image into the foreground of the Boolean tool. And then something strange is going on here. But as soon as we hook in our light wrap, the strange happening disappears. However, for some reason, the, the light wrap, the light wrap did this halo that we have here doesn't seem to come through. Now this is because in the channel Boolean, the two alpha has still alpha foreground in it. So it means it will take this alpha and it will add it to this alpha. So this alpha here, which you see is covers the whole, the whole image is at alpha one at the moment and it will add it to our alpha of the background, this one here. Now this will even result in having alpha values above one, which should be avoided. And you can also see I have some minus values in there. So this can be avoided. Let me see if I have the mi minus values also in here. Yeah, there were some minus values. So after the delta here, you can just bring in a brightness contrast and say clip blacks that will get rid of the minus values. 
Minus values are really the bad boys and should be avoided at all times. Uh, unless you're in a 3D wor workspace, there minus values can actually be very helpful. Helpful. I wanted to say healthy. <laughs> yeah. So here in the channel boolean, to make our halo come back, we simply say alpha do not touch and bang, here's our light wrap. So to clarify things a little bit more, I have prepared a small example here with the circle and the word swag. And we're gonna see how actually this behaves when using a merge and when using a boolean. Okay, so the merge seems to be correct. Everything seems okay. The alpha also seems to be okay. Um, if we switch to the boolean, you can see that the alpha contains only the word swag and even the RGB uh, contain only the word swag. Now this is simply because we are saying to put all channels from the foreground uh, into the displayed channels. So this will result in only seeing the foreground image. Now the reason why the channel boolean is somewhat a technical tool and very powerful is because you can decide what to actually do with the alpha. For example here I could say no no not the foreground alpha I want the background alpha for whatever reasons <laughs> uh, and then you can see that now if we switch to the alpha we have only the circle okay and this can sometimes be used for certain tricks for example here uh, doing alpha multiply gets rid of all the pixels that contain the alpha values because the alpha multiply will take it will take yeah, the alpha values that you have here uh, you can see it at the bottom again it will take the alpha values which are zero despite having rgb values and it will multiply those alpha values with the rgb values resulting in zero or emptiness now here we had uh, solid alpha values, so they will remain. Now with the merge, it's a little different. The merge, uh, I use it usually f to do all these typical classic operations that we know from Photoshop. But you can see that there is no there is no add in there. So the add is really just this alpha gain down. We get the same result as if we would set this to add and do nothing. Then we get the very same result. It's uh, the alpha is the same. Now this is not wrong. There is no right or wrong. It's just technically, from a technical point of view, this channel boolean is probably the way to go when it comes to these operations that are in here. In this simple example, of course, it doesn't matter, but you will definitely uh, encounter situations where you really want to um, do certain things to your channels. And then you will be very happy that there is the channel boolean. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm gonna see you. My name is Peter. I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you do.